time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Synology DS1815 Plus NAS solution. Now, for you guys that don't know what a NAS is, it just stands for Network Attached Storage. It's basically a big hard drive for your house that all of your computers can use and your devices can use as a central point of storage. Now, the current solution that I'm using is a custom box I built with an Asus integrated CPU motherboard, has very little memory, has a couple of SATA cards in it connected to external SANS digital arrays, and it runs Windows Windows Server 2011 plus the drive pool software from StableBits and I have to say it has been an absolute nightmare ever since I put it together a couple of years ago. Every time a drive dies I lose data even with the redundancy enabled. Whenever I try to dismount a drive from it I run into software problems and crashes. It's just it's just been a pain in my ass. So when I was over at my friend's Adam's house, he's also known as Kevlar Condom on Twitter, he does a lot of stuff with media production and he actually had a Synology unit in his rack. And I asked him if it was any good and he said that he'd pick it over anything else and he's been using it for years and it's been rock solid. So I decided to reach out to Synology and ask them to send me a unit for review and they were nice enough to send me over the DS1815 Plus, which is an eight drive capable unit. Now that I have the actual NAS, I need some drives to stick into it so I have some storage. So I reached out to Seagate and they sent me eight of their NAS specific four terabyte drives. Now you wanna make sure when you select a hard drive to put in a NAS that you don't just take any old cheap hard drive off the shelf and cram it in there. You wanna make sure that it is a NAS certified drive. Synology actually has a list of supported drives on their website. You're gonna to wanna to check that out because if you use a non-NAS drive in this environment, it's probably gonna fail and you're gonna lose your data. Now I've actually been using this unit for about three days now and successfully transferred all of my data from my old NAS over to it. So I've had some time to play around with it because this definitely turned out being something a lot more feature rich than I was expecting. To be honest, I was expecting a NAS. Basically a big hard drive you put on your network, you set up some security and you're good. But this actually has far more capabilities than that. I would say it's actually more of a server. Now, when you unbox the unit, it actually comes with a couple of ethernet cables, a power cable, some screws if you wanna put SSDs in the drive arrays, and it's very, very just neat and tight packaging. Now, once you get the unit out of the box, the next thing is to install the hard drives, and it's actually incredibly easy to do. You just pop out each one of these little compartments here, and you don't need any tools. You just pop a little plastic tab out of the side, slide your drive into place, and put the little tab back in place, and slide it back into the unit, and it locks. It's actually a very, very simple and elegant design. The only time you need a tool is if you're installing SSDs into the drive bay, then you need to run screws up through the bottom of the tray, so then you'll need a screwdriver. It also comes with a pair of keys that you you can use to lock the bays in place. And what it does is it prevents you from being able to accidentally remove a drive or pop it out from the back plane while the unit's in use. Or if somebody just wants to take horrible revenge on you and decides they're gonna go yank a drive out, pff, not gonna happen, baby. Now, when we look at the back of the device, we see that it has four RJ45 capable gigabit LAN ports. And it also has four USB 3.0 ports that you can use for numerous things. Like for instance, you can connect a wireless dongle to this and have it join your wireless network. And it can also join your wireless network and wired network at the same time, just to help you get more bandwidth to the unit. You can also plug in uh, certain printers to this and drive them through USB. So it can be a print server even. Or you can use the two SATA ports that are on the back to actually connect more Synology arrays. So you can actually keep expanding. If you run out of hard drive space, add another unit, add another unit, and then interconnect them all together so they still act as one NAS. Now, depending on your needs, you might want to get a bigger or a smaller unit. This actually comes in a 12 drive, I believe, at its largest, and you can get it all the way in something as small as a two drive. And all of them run the same disk manager software from Synology. Now, this thing is dead simple to configure. Once the unit's done booting up, you'll see that the little blue light is solid on the front of the unit and the status indicator is solid green. You just have a little piece of paper that comes with it. And all you have to do is go to HTTP disk station port 5000 in any of your web browsers and it just pops up. And if that doesn't work for some reason, you can go to find.synology.com and actually find the unit on your network. So you don't have to worry about going through and figuring out which IP address DHCP leased to the unit and all that. It's actually very simple. So the first time you log into your disk station, you do a little bit of configuration. You basically give the disk station a name, you set up basically your first user account on the box, and then once that's all done, you basically show up at what looks like an operating system dashboard. It actually doesn't look all that dissimilar from some Linux distributions. 
All right, from here, it's simple to set up. First of all, there's a help that pops right up on the screen when you log in for the first time, and it can basically walk you through anything that you want to do with your NAS, whether you want to use it as a web server, whether you want to use it to stream media to your Xboxes and your PlayStation 4s using something like Plex or its internal DLNA streaming capabilities. But the first thing I did was I wanted to set up the storage, because that's the primary role of this is to be a backup to my entire house. So what I did was went into Disk Station and opened up the storage manager, then inside of the storage manager you can go down and create a disk group and from the disk group you can select all of the disks that you want to participate in the group and you can create multiple groups if you want then after you select the disks that you want to join the group you select the raid level that you want to use I opted to just use Synology's raid because everything I've read says that it's just it's just the simplest and most performant form of raid on this device but it does support some conventional raid types too now once you have the raid group configured then you can actually go in under volume and create your actual disk volume and this is going to be where all your folders are created that get shared over the network and what everything is accessing. Now the Synology Array uses the EXT4 file system type so it's not FAT, it's not NTFS, those are the common file systems I use but one thing I noticed about the unit is it seamlessly integrates over the network with Samba and Microsoft networking support so you literally it acts just like you're connecting to another Microsoft device. But of course it's going to work with your OS X devices also and Linux devices for that matter for you three people to have them. Totally kidding, I actually like Linux guys, totally kidding, just, just calm down. Now when you create the RAID volume, you also get the option of whether or not you wanna use one drive or two drive redundancy. What that means is if one or two drives fails in the unit, you don't lose any data. You can actually remove those dead drives, put new drives in their place and it will rebuild the array. And that's one of the biggest things that's important to me is to never lose data. And if a single hard drive dies in a conventional RAID zero or a RAID that doesn't have any kind of parity or redundancy, you will lose all of your data. And that's, that's unacceptable. So for me, since I have 32 terabytes of raw storage installed here through the Seagate NAS drives, I decided to go ahead and use two drive redundancy, which dropped the overall storage down to about 24 terabytes overall, which is still plenty of storage for my needs currently, and I can expand further if I want. And I even have the option to swap out the disks with disks that are bigger and slowly rebuild my array so that it gets bigger and bigger without having to remove the data and put it back on, which I think is really cool. And for those of you guys that are extra super nerdy it does support iSCSI LUNs iSCSI targets it has an SSD cache capability so if you want to speed it up you can actually put an SSD in one of the drive bays and assign it as a cache for the rest of the raid to give you faster read write speeds but honestly for what I'm using it for I don't think that'll be necessary so once you have your volume created you can actually open up file station which is the application on disk manager that allows you to manage your, all of your folders shares and all of the security permissions and encryption stuff that you need now one of the things I really like about this unit is as a hardware encryption and decryption engine built into it alongside the quad core processor which allows it to do encryption and decryption on the fly for any data that you want which is really nice because a lot of people don't want their data to be able to access or decrypted externally so once you create a folder you can actually go in and select which users you want to access that folder and you can also create new users and you can create new groups which you can add users to that way you can have a group that's like cat enthusiasts and you can assign cat enthusiasts to any folders that might have to do with cats but then leave it off of any of the folders that might to do with dogs and that way you can't have all them cat owners like getting all up in the dog owners business yeah now, one of the things I really love about this unit is just how versatile and configurable everything is. Case in point, I have four LAN ports on the back of the unit, but I don't have managed switches. I don't have anything fancy, but I still want to utilize those LAN ports to increase my reliability and my throughput when streaming to multiple devices simultaneously. So if I open up the control panel and I go to the network interface, I can actually go and configure each LAN port individually. So let's say I want to connect a LAN port directly to William PC, my big computer. I can do that and have a private one one gigabit connection to the array while still feeding the rest of my house. My other option is I can plug all four ports of the network into my wireless routers, my network switches, or all into the same switch for that matter and enable something called adaptive load balancing. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna assign a single IP to all four of those NICs and then load balance it best it can over the network and play with the routing while things are streaming in the house to give you even more bandwidth. Now I noticed that even plugging all four connections into a single switch, I went from 90 megabytes a second to 109 megabytes per second throughput. Don't ask me the technical details of how the hell that worked, but it did. 
Now, I'm going to be honest, this thing has way too many features to mention in one video. When you open up the operating system and you go poking around, you realize that the thing is basically its own computer and its own server running its own operating system. You can even open the Synology Package Center, which is like a marketplace for all of the applications and services that you can install on this. And one of the services I love the most is Plex. I've used Plex forever as a transcoding server, but I could never run it on my current NAS that I have, my Windows Home Server 2011, because it would max it out and it couldn't do any the transcoding, so I had a separate server set up that did the transcoding for me. This actually runs Plex flawlessly. I actually got it to feed two devices, my iPhone and live stream on my projector and on my computer screen. And I noticed that the CPU usage was getting very, very high on the unit. So I wouldn't recommend this if you need to live stream and transcode to more than two sources simultaneously. Um, and you also have lots of other apps you can install for like better DLNA support, better, better stuff for streaming your music to receivers that support certain standards. And and things like that. I mean, there's just a massive amount of applications. And there's also antivirus applications. There's malware applications you can download so it can do all real-time scanning of your data on the NAS to make sure that you're not uh, you're not getting any infected files spread around your network. It also has backup support where you can actually connect an external volume or even an external volume mounted somewhere else on your network. You can have this do scheduled backups of certain critical data. That way, if for some reason the thing explodes and your house burns down, Let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. That was, I went to a pretty dark place, didn't I? But let's just say it happens. Your house burns down, right? It'd be nice to know that your data was backed up off site. So there are ways for you to configure this to actually back up your data to other network shares, which ultimately you could map to online storage and things like that. It's pretty much infinite and the possibilities of you know how you can get this thing to handle your data, which is really cool. There's also another application I wanna install on here and tried called Surveillance Station. And it's a free app that you can install from Synology and it allows this unit to control IP cameras throughout your house. So if you buy a camera that's IP camera that's connected either through RJ45 or wireless, this unit can actually manage it and record the telemetry from it and control all those cameras to give you like a, like a full-blown security system. It actually looks really cool. You guys should check it out. Another thing is the device is in incredibly stable. I've been running it three days hard, copying data to it the entire time and using Plex to stream media to the Nerd Cave bedroom where I was watching it on the projector. And I can tell you it never hiccup. Nothing crashed. Nothing went wrong. All the widgets and everything performed good. There's even a resource monitor that runs inside of Disk Manager that you can have up on the screen in your browser live reporting telemetry from it. And it showed all my disk activity, shows me the temperature of the drives. It shows me everything and it tells me whether my disk station is doing well or not. You can also configure it to send you a notification via email or through SMS messaging to your cell phone when something goes wrong. If something gets detached from it, if something uh, breaks down, like one of the disks has read write failures or it detects that it's going to fail, you can get some kind of a notification. So even if you're on vacation or you're away from your house, you can go, oh my God, there's something going on. And then you can actually log into the system remotely if you choose and rectify the problem however you'd like. Which leads to the next feature and that is external access. Not only can you set this up as an external access to your data so that over the internet you can access it and you have to enable that feature and configure it with the security permissions that you want but that feature is there and very very handy but you can also set up your devices to sync data to it so it acts like a cloud drive you can set up uh, this thing basically so it's like your own personal OneDrive or your own own personal Dropbox where the data is being synced to all of the devices that you choose in real time somebody edits a file here it gets updated everywhere all through this little guy all right the next thing I want to talk about is how quiet this was. This is the part I wasn't expecting. I kind of expected eight spinning disks to make a hell of a lot of noise, but those Seagate NAS drives are so quiet. Listen, I have a lav mic on right here. That's it, just a slight, slight little hum. And I even ran it at full tilt, copying 24 hours a day for nearly three days. And it never got any louder than this. It absolutely blew my mind. So if you're looking for something quiet, I absolutely recommend this. But again, research the drives that you're gonna use. I found the Seagate NAS drives are incredibly quiet, but some drives may not be so quiet. So just do your research. So guys, needless to say, I absolutely love this little guy. It turned out beating my expectations pretty dramatically. Uh, at first I thought it was gonna be just a really well-built secure NAS solution. And it turned out to be more of a replacement for my server plus a NAS solution. So my current server that I'm using for Plex transcoding and everything, I'm just gonna shut that thing down and repurpose it to something else. This is now my Plex media server. This is now the brain and storage for my house. This stores all the backups for my computer. It has two drive redundancy. So if two drives fail in this thing, I still can recover all of my data. And that gives me peace of mind. And that's worth a lot to me.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Synology DS1815 Plus with my eight four terabyte Seagate NAS drives. This thing is dead silent. The build quality on it is phenomenal. The flexibility with the software on it and the ability to configure the LAN ports separately, set up all the permissions, set up encryption, offsite access, cloud, uh, use it as your print server, use it as your web server. Use, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I could make a million videos just on this one thing. So if you guys have anything else you'd like me to cover on the unit, please leave it down below in the comments or come over and tweet me. I'm at Barnacles over on Twitter. Thanks for watching guys and until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>